Software is more important than hardware. It always has been. Because without the software, what do you have? You just got a pile of parts. That's it. Nothing. You need software. I don't think about the stuff I use every day. So what I'm going to do in this video is cover all the programs that I use on a daily basis. Now, before we get started, go ahead and put in the comments a couple programs that you use every day. I'm kind of curious. And also that'll help the algorithm. Give it a like and a thumbs up and all that. I'm going to talk about a lot of software that's kind of in depth, but I'm not going to go into too much depth in this video. So if there's any piece of software that you're like, oh, whoa, 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 that looks really cool. So what you should do is tell me in the comments and whatever stuff gets a bunch of comments, I will make dedicated videos just on that one piece of software showing you why it's useful, why I use it and how you can use it to the maximum potential. Please don't go out and buy a retail copy of Windows because it's going to cost you 10 to 12 times as much as this. This is where I've been getting my Windows keys for the last couple of years right here on whokeys.com. The difference is this is an OEM key, so it's tied to the hardware. The other difference is you'll be doing your own tech support here because you don't get the Microsoft tech support, but we're building a system and I don't think any of us have ever used Microsoft's tech support. So, so right now it's time for the Halloween sale. You know, I'm spookier than Halloween, so we can do 25% off with the coupon code TS25. So these prices you're seeing on the screen here for Windows 11, we can make it a lot cheaper. You've got Windows 10 Pro, we've got Windows 10 Home, we have Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, then you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. Enough of that stuff. Oh God, it just got bright. Why did it get so bright? Because Firefox is my browser of choice and they've decided to have a white screen. Look at that beautiful thing. Why do I use Firefox and not Chrome or anything else. Chrome. I said it funny. All right, let's talk about that for two seconds and then I'll move on. Firefox is much better when it comes to privacy. I like the layout of it better as well. It doesn't have all that round bubbly nonsense. I feel like at some point uh, Chrome is just going to be a circle. We have monitors that are rectangles, so I feel like more rectangular shapes are better than circular shapes. But, you know, there's a lot of other browsers out there that are good. Edge and Opera and Vivaldi, but they all rely on Chrome. So, you know, while they may be better than Chrome, they're still not using Firefox as a back, um, a back end. And that's kind of a big deal to me because Google has been trying to do things to, um, I guess, make ad blockers ineffective. They don't, they don't want you to use an ad blocker. They want to allow ads to get through because that's how they make a lot of their money. So, but mainly I like the functionality of Firefox. So that's why I use it. Next up, I have this open all the time. This is FUBAR 2000. It's my music player because I play music myself from my NAS. Um, I do not like using Spotify because I don't like corporations telling me what to listen to. And I think a lot of you out there may be doing something that uh, is a little bit scary and that's allowing the corporations to tell you what to listen to. And you just show up and you're like, play uh, Witch House. And you don't know any of the artists anymore. It removes that connection from you and your music and you just tell these things to play whatever and you listen to music and it doesn't really matter what it is but it's being fed to you from like Spotify or some corporation and that's not good for the artists because it's you're trusting Spotify instead of seeking out the artists finding their stuff you know and then maybe buying their t-shirts um, and listening to the experience the entire album as they created it instead of just listening to one track from here and there so yeah it's not good um, to be living that way in my opinion I'm not going to yell and scream at you if you're someone who does not really that into music and you just need some background noise and you just put on like whatever chill thing you can put on. Whatever. You do you. I'll make a video soon talking about how I think Spotify has damaged the music world. And it's going to be somewhat in depth, so I'll get to that when I have time. Next up, always running in the back in my system, is this little program called Ear Trumpet. And you'll see it down here. It's just a much better control system for all of your audio stuff. Now this could be a full on video, just know that already it's better, but you can take each individual thing, like say I've got my Discord here, you can click on Discord to mute it, or you can right click on it and then route it to a different output. So that way you can have each different program or each different thing going to a different output. So you can have some things coming through your speakers, some things going through your headphones. It's a lot better 
than just the native Windows thing. It's like Windows should have been like that in the first place. And then in order to map it all, I use this program here. This is Voice Meter. I use Voice Meter Banana. I paid for that one over here. It has a few more ins and outs. And this just allows you to remap all of your different audio stuff. Um, may not be a big deal for a lot of you, but you know, for me, I love it. Now I'm always running a VPN on one of my computers that's connected to the internet all the time doing things. But otherwise I toggle a VPN on my main computer when I need it. And I have been using private internet access for a long time and I'm not going to switch because they've been so fast and it's so inexpensive. We also have a conflict of interest to announce because we do have an affiliate account with them. And I've been posting that for probably about 10 years now. I don't know, like a long time. Um, now the thing about this conflict of interest is like, yes, a lot of people will use that as a way to say that it's a shady service or something. But my point on this, I've been using this since before we became an affiliate. Um, so I've been using it for a long time. And the main thing for me is they have never leaked an IP address. They have uh, never put anybody in harm's way, never leaked any customer data. And so they have a perfect track record in that way. And they're extremely inexpensive and they're also extremely uh, fast. So that's kind of my trade-off. You can yell and scream about like where are they located, all that kind of stuff. I use a VPN, keeps me safe online, and uh, this has been perfect for me for a long time, and I run it on like five different computers in my house. So we do have an affiliate link in the description. It'll get you a better deal. So go ahead and click on that down there. And then for uh, torrenting, I run this, and it's pretty much just in the background doing stuff while this is turned on. But this is the thing I want to show you. Split tunneling down here. Check mark that and then we'll say like, you can go ahead and add applications here and say these applications use the VPN, these applications do not. So that way you can say like maybe Steam and, and whatever else does not use the VPN so that way it gets full speed. But Qubit Torrent always uses the VPN. And that way you can have it running and still get full speed on some things, you know, because it does slow you down a tiny bit. Let's talk about some game stuff, shall we? So I've been doing a lot of pixel art for a project I'm working on. I was using Unity every day, but I've been completely derailed by all that Unity nonsense now. I've been looking at Godot, but that's not my cup of tea just yet. I think it will be in a year or two. So I'm probably going to go back to Unity, but the one thing I keep using every day is A Sprite. And I've got over a thousand hours in A Sprite recently, and I've been having a lot of fun creating pixel characters. I'm not amazing at it, but it's fun and I can animate them and hopefully we'll have a game that you know I'll be able to do the artwork because that was always a big limitation is just come up with stuff but I, no one you know never had anybody to do the artwork so I'm like you know what I'll just do some of the artwork myself it's been frustrating literally years of being like nobody would, I, I don't know anybody who does artwork like seriously so yeah <laughs> now I'll be doing a lot of it myself and then as far as like you know game clients I usually have GOG open and I'm, I play a game, probably I try to play like a little bit every day if I can. So I usually use GOG, and if not, it's gonna be Steam, but that's, we all use that stuff. All right, next up, I use Power Toys. And the main reason that I use Power Toys is, let me show you here. I don't care about a lot of the stuff that it does, but Power Toys is a package of tools made by Microsoft, but it has all this cool stuff here that just adds functionality to Windows. My favorite is Fancy Zones. Now, Fancy Zones, I should make an entire video on it, but it allows us to create different layouts for our snapping zones. You can create all kinds of weird snapping zones. I don't have time to do it in this video, but yeah. Open Broadcaster is usually open. I'm using it right now. And I use it for you know, games and everything else. Handbrake, I render a lot of stuff. And I'm using Handbrake pretty much well, all the time. I don't know, I use, it, I use Handbrake quite a bit. Because if I ever have like an H.264 file or something, I want to convert it to AV1 and I just use Handbrake to do that. Or if I have some anime that's H.264 or even super high resolution, I like to compress it down using the anime settings. All right, this is something I'm not extremely happy about because I don't love Discord, but I use it a lot because a lot of people are there. And I feel like with social media and Discord, that's the, kind of the problem right now is use all these things because people were there. But right now, I'm after seeing what happened to Unity, what happened to Twitter, what happened to just a lot of these Silicon Valley, um, I guess, tech firms, they tend to prioritize money over user experience and they tend to prioritize massive massive profits over just the users and that's not cool whenever i see something that has a whole bunch of vcs 
and you know dudes who are just way too excited about some nonsense technology i get weird and that's kind of what's happened with discord it's just got so much funding and stuff i don't think discord's ever going to make any money and that worries me so it's one of those things where i feel like it's gonna have to be replaced by an open source thing mumble maybe a better version of mumble. I mean, discord's kind of based on mumble and we should go back and make a better version that's open source but yeah all right the next thing i use every day is my sip snipping tool now there's two different snipping tools on windows snip and sketch and the snipping tool i use the old school snipping tool snip and sketch actually um, keeps the entire image it's really weird like if you snip a part of the screen and you're trying to leave something out snip and sketch keeps the whole thing if i come over here and snip and sketch and i copy that much and i save it it saves the whole screen like it it'll show this but if you know how to get into the information of this you can like you know basically zoom out and look at the rest of the screen so don't use that one use just their old school snipping tool i use malware bytes on my computer it's a bit expensive but it's i feel like it does a pretty good job of keeping me safe i also have a raspberry pi in the other room running pie hole i don't know i'm kind of thinking about you know looking around on the market to see if anything is better for cheaper because i've had it for a few years and i've had i've got no complaints with it it's been great it finds stuff does a good does a really good job yeah it's a it's a bit expensive per year i don't think it was as much when i started but i don't know i use microsoft tasks here's ideas for, for tech videos right here I, I did some of these a long time ago look at this <laughs> my daily programs it's pretty old july 8th yeah that's how far behind we are so i can i can put all my tasks over here now when it comes to tasks and everything i've I don't like to-do lists. I don't like lists. They kind of give me anxiety because I, it's all, always stuff that I don't want to do. If I want to do it, I usually don't even need to put it on a list. When I'm making a game or something, yes, I should probably make put things on a list. But I, I kind of have to do this, and I hate it. And I tried like 20 different list programs, tried some open source ones, tried some Linux, tried some self-hosted stuff, and just this is the only one that worked, and I can have it on my phone, uh, on Android. And on my computer and it just works and then i use notepad plus plus every day there we go take a look at this it's my um, I, it's my notepad replacement program it, i use it to edit anything just anything any files with code so or whatever css files edit them in here ini files edit them in here text files right here and you can download all kinds of cool themes to make it dark like i like so yeah notepad plus plus is my favorite text editor um, there's some other ones that are not free that some people might like, but I like this one and it's free. The bulk rename utility. If you're always renaming stuff, this is extremely handy. It's nice because it's a GUI. You don't have to do anything in the command line and you can see the results in real time. You highlight stuff and uh, I'm not going to make a full video on that, but if you want to see something, you know, a full video on this, it's so ridiculously handy being able to bulk rename everything in a folder. And the last thing I use, I use Open Shell Menu. Now this allows you to go back to an old school style start menu that you can, I mean, you can pick like Windows 98, 95 style if you wanted to, Windows XP style, Windows Vista style, just different styles. And then you can customize them to your heart's content. And I really, really like it. So I use Open Shell. And that's pretty much what I use on a daily basis. What do you use on a daily basis? And out of all of this stuff here, what do you want me to go into more detail? Do you want to see some detail on ear trumpet and how I route all the audio? Do you want more videos on FUBAR? Do you want to talk about how I use Handbrake? Uh, or should we get nerdy and show you how I set up my fancy zones to snap all my windows around on my screen? What do you want to know? Do you want to know about Acebrite? You know, are you curious about pixel art? Let me know because I will make a dedicated video on any piece of the software that you're curious about. Because I think, again, software is more important than hardware while we're talking about all this um you know software the last thing i'll mention is linux so why am i not on linux well i do have a couple linux machines in the house uh, one of them is running proxmox and it's doing server stuff and on that one there's a debian server and some others a new ubuntu server on there as well there's a couple things going on that so i don't know if that counts as three or one the vms count as three or one and i got a media center thing um, but there's a lot of reasons why i use windows and I don't think I'm going to get into it all in this video, but um, just put it this way. A lot of my programs only work or work best in Windows, uh, namely the uh, FUBAR. That's really, really important to me. I got it working, yes, on Linux, but it was not the same experience. It was a mess and it was a pain in the ass trying to map it to my heart, my, my, my NAS to get it to work and everything. Um, there's a few things on Linux that are pretty close, like 
what is it b audio or something i don't know it was like the one that was closest <clears throat> but the other thing is that my music creation program a lot of the plugins are specifically designed for either windows or mac and they are not compatible with linux so while i can use really cool um, software like lmms and all that for for linux to make music um you you don't have the same plugin support and that's really important to me so i need to use windows from a creative standpoint and then when it comes to video games i like to mod games i mod a lot of the games that i play and you know you can play a lot of games on linux and it's a very good experience in fact i prefer the experience of you know switching windows and alt tabbing and stuff on linux when you're in games and i like how their desktop works better but um trying to get mods to work is going to be a hit or miss thing with a lot of games so that's why i usually just stick to windows it's pragmatic anyway hope that satisfies the linux crowd and the last thing i want to say is let's do let's keep on doing this sale until halloween where's that thing there it is oh this thing's closer now there's secrets on the desk halloweener dog you get 30 percent off on this and this with amazing yes thumb thumbstick it feels so good this actually shows up in your computer as an xbox controller and then if you hold down the home button if you're like if you want to do direct input hold down the home button for five seconds and it'll switch to direct input and then we got keyboard it's water resistant all right head over to epicpants.com halloweener dog is the the coupon code until halloween to get these 30 percent off and the mouse pads too yes yeah